It's here. It's finally here. After months of waiting, well, I pre-ordered it months ago, but people have been waiting for this machine for years. Prusa's first consumer-level hobby-grade Core XY 3D printer is finally here, and today we're going to be unboxing the machine. I know, sneak peek. And we're going to just kind of dive into our first look and initial impressions. This video is not at all meant to be an endorsement. It's not at all meant to be a review. Just, I've been printing on this machine all afternoon. What are my thoughts right now? Full transparency, disclosure time. I paid for this 3D printer with my own money. I work hard for it. No, Prusa did not send me this printer. No, Prusa is not going to directly influence anything that I have to do or say about this printer. No, I have never been in contact with Prusa for anything outside of general customer support as a paying customer. The reality is, this printer just happened to come out at just the right time. I am a big Prusa fan, and I have been for many, many years. My interest in the Prusa Mark III is what got me into 3D printing. When I received the Core 1 yesterday, it was immediately apparent that that was one dense box. The thing was really heavy. The shipping weight was like 57 pounds, and I wasn't quite sure what to expect. Once you actually get into the unboxing process, it's a fairly standard affair when you have a fully assembled 3D printer. You have some cardboard, but there's only one little bit of foam, and, well, the foam is different than some other printers I've encountered. It's not super soft, but it's not super dense either. Like, I can't bend and break it. It's dense Ow. and just feels nice, but there was only one piece that wasn't super huge. I cut that off because it made for a good prop. There was no plastic packing peanuts. There was no, like, air bubble mailer things, and the actual printer was contained really nicely with just some simple, easy to recycle cardboard. I didn't have any zip ties to cut off of the printer. I didn't have any screws to remove. And in terms of unboxing, everything was labeled really well to make it nice and easy to do. You'll find plenty of other videos with better instructions and people who did it the right way. I did it the way that I could do it, trying to film and well, it worked. My printer's out of the box. Once you get the machine out of the box, you're going to get your standard affair. You have your toolkit, a pack of Haribo gummy bears, a flash drive. Cameraman stares at the gummy bears intently. Don't look at me like that. I didn't realize that came with the printer. I thought you bought those and brought them over here. No, man, that's a Prusa thing. That's dope. Yeah, when you buy a Prusa, you get gummy bears with it. Huh. Learn, learn something new every day. <laughs> You're going to get a full kilogram spool of Prusament Galaxy Black PLA. At least I received Galaxy Black. And it's 100% by design that they give you Galaxy Black because glittery filaments do help to hide print imperfections. That's not exactly a secret in the 3D printing space. But it's much appreciated that when you spend $1,200 on a 3D printer, you get a full kilogram of filament with it so that way you can start printing immediately. Once you have the printer and all the accessories out of the box, it's going to be time to start doing your assembly. In this case, all you have to do is just follow the convenient QR code, which gives you a link to the things you need for this printer. This particular QR code happens to be on a hand sign thank you note. No, it's not because I'm somebody super important, but I feel like I am today. Joe Prusa signed a handful of these, it seems, for people who pre-ordered this machine in the frame of day one. And as soon as pre-orders were available, I ordered mine. So this is a really cool little perk, little bonus item that came with the printer, and I'm really excited about it. We'll probably find something cool to do with it. But basically, just follow the instructions and get your machine all ready to go by putting the screen on. I will say this, putting the screen on this printer was the only difficult thing in terms of operation. I did have a bit of a struggle with that, and I feel like the ribbon cable that connects the screen to the actual printer could have been a little bit longer to help facilitate adding that on. But other than that, it really wasn't hard to do. 
Essentially, once the screen is on and you have the cardboard removed from the actual gantry itself, you're almost ready for boot up. Make sure you insert the flash drive before first boot, because based off my experience, it will give you an error message. I don't have a picture, because it scared me. I got a bright red screen telling me that there was firmware that needed updated. And basically, I turned the machine off, put the flash drive into the machine, and started it right back up. The update commenced, and then the machine walked me through the little wizard to set everything up. And I followed the steps really nice and straightforward on my phone to get this thing connected to Prusa Connect and the studio's Wi-Fi. And after that, it was time to start printing after the thing ran through its initial calibrations. The very first print that I knocked off on the new Core 1 was this little fella. This is just a standard Benchy. But this Benchy, if you saw the TikTok or the YouTube short, was printed in eight minutes. This is the fastest printing Benchy that I've ever seen. Now, it's pretty light print quality, decent. It doesn't conform to speed Benchy rules, but there are sliced files on this thing for like a 14 minute Benchy, and that's pretty cool. But I was happy with my little eight minute Benchy and the quality is impressive for the size. If you've been watching the channel for any length of time, we did a video uh, about a year and a half ago where we did some 3D printed kitchen upgrades. And as a part of that video, for my grandmother, I printed these water bottle slash tumbler cup dryers. So after you're done doing dishes, you have an upright place with an air gap to put your drinkware to be able to dry. And I printed them out of a nice teal color because I thought it was going to be just a nice pop of color. Well, the issue is I didn't realize at the time the teal was going to show any leftover dirt and things like that. Basically really hard to keep clean. And she's been asking me for some time to print her some in black. And did I remember to do that? No, I didn't. And I feel kind of bad. She asked me again this morning, and I figured, well, seeing as I'm unboxing a new machine and going to be doing some test printing, it was the perfect time. So I hopped on to Burnables and found this nice smaller model that prints in two pieces, just like the previous one, and printed it out of the included Galaxy Black PLA from Prusament. And I am blown away at the results of this. So far, the Core 1 is producing the absolute best top and bottom layers that I have ever seen on a 3D printer. So a couple of to-do list prints later, I was ready to move on to some other testing. And one of the things that we tested was actually for our new table, we have one of these here fancy sit and stand desks where you can just lower the desk out of the way. Or if you're standing like we are now and need to bring it up to height, well, you just push a button and it does that. I wanted to print a cable catch for the sit stand desk because we do use this desk for live streams or we will be again in the future. Basically just a little place for our cables to live nice and orderly so that way they're within arm's reach when we're working at this table. And it was while printing the cable catch that I realized that there is a neat party trick living inside of this machine. I noticed there was a kind of tactile click when you open and close the door and didn't put much thought into it until printing the cable catch and I opened the door and wanted to see what was going on. Lo and behold, it's an auto pause feature. Whenever you open the door on this thing, it just pauses the printing and the print head moves to a safe place. Really cool idea. I love the notion of what that could be. Basically for people who have children who like to touch the printer, that's a really cool idea. They may still get burned on the nozzle because it is going to bring the nozzle front and to the corner of the machine. However, little hands aren't going to get caught in moving pieces. It also could work in a production environment. A friend of mine uses 3D printers in his job and made a really good point that not everybody is trained on how the 3D printer works at work. And if you open the door while they're using it, they might be inclined to touch something they're not supposed to. I like to touch prints while they're printing. I don't know why. Help. But seriously, when you open the door and the thing pauses, it is a really solid idea. 
where it's not a great feature is if you're a content creator and you need to print with the door open while you are doing a video about the machine. Don't worry, it's easy enough to just toggle a switch in the screen to disable that feature while you need it to be disabled. Basically, I like the idea of the safety feature. It was a cool surprise. I haven't seen somebody talk about that yet, but it was neat. Whenever I'm evaluating a machine, there are two things that are 100% certain. Number one, I am going to print a fidget toy. Number two, I need to test print and place models. Typically, these things go hand in hand. This is no exception. I found this switch on printables and it clicks. It's a satisfying little print and place fidget toy that the Core One was able to handle in right about 20 minutes. Super happy with the quality. The top and bottom layers are mint. The overhangs are phenomenal. And I did have to kind of break the little switch loose, but overall, the print quality is, as far as I can tell, pretty awesome. It works as it's supposed to. It fits me, and it satisfies my need to make a little bit of noise. And the last print that I did today prior to starting filming this video was the standard Prusa keychain. This is a quick nine minute print that comes on the flash drive. Yes, USB stick, printing, or wireless, or ethernet. Basically a dealer's choice. However you want to connect to this thing, basically you can. I printed this because I wanted a good print to easily show off the bottom layers. This thing, when it runs, it does local area probing basically. There's a load cell in the nozzle and basically it just probes where it needs to probe for the print that you're going to be printing. And as a result of the load cell's accuracy, you're able to get some amazing first layers without having to remember to tell this machine which print bed you're using, or rely on a scanner of any form to read a code to know which print bed you're using. You know who you are. But I'm super stoked at how this thing is doing top and bottom layers. The bottom layer on the included smooth build plate is glassy smooth. I don't know how good of a job we're gonna be able to do showing it to you, but seriously, the best first layers I've ever seen on a 3D printer to date. And I've seen some good first layers. I've also been the cause for some really bad first layers. This is the point in the video where we would thank our sponsor if this video had one. However, since it doesn't, it's you, the awesome viewers. If you want to financially support the channel, be sure to check out our YouTube memberships or head over to rtms.tech for some sweet merch. We have drinkware, we have shirts, we have hats, we have patches, all sorts of really neat stuff and it all directly supports us. If you don't wanna buy something that's got my name on it, that's fine too. We also have affiliate links to places like Amazon and a couple of filament companies in the description. They don't cost you anything to use those affiliate links, they just go directly towards helping us produce more content. Overall, while I've had this machine open and printing for less than 12 hours, I've grown quite fond of it. And I do look forward to the next couple of weeks where we're doing some really in-depth testing for our full length review. Right now, it's not crazy loud. The footprint is great. There's a ton of quality of life features that I really enjoy. And I think that the Prusa Core 1 is going to become a very prominent member of this channel in terms of a workhorse printer that we use to make the things for the channel. And if you're interested in seeing our follow-up and full-length review, be sure to subscribe so that way you don't miss out on that. So, thanks for hanging out so far. We've really enjoyed getting to cover some of the Prusa Core 1 and really look forward to doing a full deep dive. If you've got a Core 1 already, let us know how your experience is going in the comments, or if you're curious about this machine and have some things you want to know about in the full-length review, let us know. We want to test what you're looking to see. And honestly, I'm really happy so far. The Core 1's a machine that, well, you want to take home to your parents. She makes a good first impression.